So today I want to talk about my husband Robert, Robert Monte. He, um, this is one of my favorite pictures of him. It's from I think around uh, 1980 at the ballet mat in Columbus, and the lovely lady is um, his partner is Dana Fox, who she's still around and and I believe a teacher <clears throat> um, in North Carolina, and. I've talked to her a couple times on Facebook. She seems like a really cool person. But um, he was a ballet dancer for many years in the U.S. and in Europe. And uh, so I'm always like, tell me a story, tell me a story. And he's like, I, I don't really remember. And then, you know, then he'll remember something and start talking about <clears throat> some, you know, stories of being on buses with guys and, and the crazy stuff they kind of used to do um, before or after performances and, and you know, or one one ballet, I think it was Nutcracker, where he had to do some dance in a loincloth and had wear full body makeup and <laughs> stuff like that. And But he's got a lot of crazy stories and I'm like, you know, tell me a story. Tell me about this or that. And he Sometimes he will, and sometimes he'll just say, I don't remember. And he, But he always says something like, I was too fat. And I'm like, you weren't fat. I mean, he looks fine there. <laughs> but he said, no, no, as far as ballet dancers go, I was too, I was told I was too fat. But they hired me because I could lift girls. And I'm like, that's not the only reason they hired you, okay? It may have been one reason, but he could dance. And he's like, oh, I wasn't that good. And I'm like, well, then how did you get to be a principal at some place like Ballet Met or, or, you know, I don't know, was there Davenport, Iowa or Des Moines? I can't remember. And he was in North Carolina Dance Theater and then several places in France and a place in uh, the National Ballet in, I think it was Lisbon. And he was supposed to go on tour with them and I think he got an injury or something and that's why he came back to the states and then that's when I met him at University of Maine because he was um, his dad was a professor there and he was living with his mom and dad in Orono and, and going back to school and that was when I met him he was he's 11 years older than I am he didn't act 11 years older though <laughs> I thought he was a lot younger um, and he still does this stuff to me like he studied with um, mine here in Maine with uh, the famous gentleman named Tony Montanero, Montanero, and whose wife Karen is still around. And one thing he's always telling me is that he knew both of them in various contexts before they met each other and got married. So that was his little story about that. But sometimes, you know, if I get ticked off a little, he starts doing the mime face. He starts pursing his lips like the mimes do and going, oh, and he starts kind of like imitating me, but in a very immature mime fashion. <laughs> and then I start laughing because, you know, he's doing the mime thing. And when we moved, I found his juggling clubs because he knows how to juggle. He took up juggling once and he's got the balls and he's got the juggling balls, I mean, and he's got the lightweight clubs. So... I forget what place we were living, Freeport or something, and he would just go out in the yard and, and toss around these juggling clubs, and uh, people would be driving by, and he was juggling on the front lawn, and they're like, what the hell is this guy doing? So I thought in, if he's up for it sometime this week, I'll make him go outside and do some juggling, and maybe I'll make him put on some mime makeup and do some mime stuff, because he, he can do it. He just... I'm like, do the wall, do the wall, Robert. He's like, I don't know. I mean, and he does the, the little hand dancing things. I think I took a video of him doing that a while back. And somebody on his Facebook, another dancer, was like, put your thumb in or something like that. You know, and I'm like, all oh, these dancers, they're really picky. <laughs> I took ballet um, at the theater in Amesbury. I, I would, because I was... An understudy Kit Kat girl in cabaret. I was really the curtain puller and I was a dresser um, because there was a lot of quick costume changes. So I had to go back and help these guys 
um, <clears throat> they were wearing sailor uniforms that we rented and they were real wool sailor uniforms and they had like 14 buttons on each side and they were also other they played dual parts in cabaret because it was a small place and we had rotating sets so these guys had to rotate the set when the lights went dark in between scenes go back whip off these sailor suits and put on a regular suit so they could play a customer in a cabaret sometimes they were sailors and sometimes they were guys in suits and so I was helping them because I was a wardrobe assistant and among other things and there was a guy that was directing and he had a power trip going on and I was sitting in the dressing room knitting I was knitting like a I used to knit really long scarves, like like six foot long scarves. And <laughs> I was sitting there knitting because I was waiting, you know, for the next time I had to go backstage and do something or pull the curtain or whatever. And this guy came and he said, I heard you're helping men undress. And I'm like, what? Because I was 16. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, because I didn't, you know, I was from a small New England town. I wasn't indulging in, in that kind of stuff. You know, it was just work. I was working. And I think I made like two or three bucks an hour. <laughs> you know? And if that. And I was like, dang. You know, so I ran to the bathroom. I was crying. And there was this woman who played the German woman in in this. And she was in the bathroom. And I, and I she says, why are you crying? I'm like, this guy was mean to me. He accused me of being like a, a slut or something. Like don't ever touch men. And I'm like, I wasn't touching them. I was helping them undress. And she said, wait a minute. And she went and talked to the wardrobe master. And he was the guy that was also the head of like the whole place. He ran the whole place. He ran the kitchen. He ran the costumes. He could sew. And he was the man in charge aside from the owner. And the place couldn't have been run without him. It really couldn't. And this guy went and talked to that guy and said, if you ever talk to her again like that or anybody in my theater I'm going to mess you up and the, and the guy never said another word to me he was just he was a friend of he was a stepdad to one of my friends and I guess he was just a misogynist or someone had a power trip I'm like dang you know but you know you run into those types you just do and it's not just in a theater it's everywhere and I just I can't stand people like that. I really can't. And I try to defend if women are getting talked down to, I will go to town on people. <laughs> you know, I've been like, but you know, so I have a tendency to be a little dramatic because I was a theater major in college at the time I spent there. I didn't graduate, but, um, <laughs> you know, but Robert's funny. He just, he'll be like, when I get all upset, he just, like I said, he's, I'll say, oh, I'm just so mad. I'm just going to go jump in the river. What would you do if I jumped in the river? And he'll say, well, I'd miss you. <laughs> There's something like that. I'm like, and if I get mad at him, I'm like, oh, you, I'm just going to kill you. And I don't, I don't really mean it. I'm just going off. And he goes, well, good. Then I wouldn't have to listen to you anymore or something like that. And I'm just like, oh, and I go sputtering off, you know. And and that's usually when I start cooking or, or cleaning or you know something like that but he's he's funny he's he's very calm and he doesn't not much um upsets him and so it's a good foil for someone like me because <laughs> you know and i'm a I, i'm a writer so i'm always like fantasizing about stuff i have a rich fantasy life because i write and when i'm not unpacking boxes and cooking and scooping cat litter and all the stupid mundane things you have to do right now I, I i i bought some new underwear at target the other day i was looking for a garbage can because we had to leave our old one behind because it was full of nasty garbage the landlady did that so we couldn't put it in the car because she put it and i'm like dang you know so i went and bought a new garbage can but i was looking at target first so i wouldn't have to go all the way to lowe's and i'm like oh i gotta do laundry so i bought two packs of underwear so i wouldn't have to do laundry for a couple days because I was running out of underwear <laughs> but it was like buy one get one half off and I kind of needed it anyway because you know you can always use new underwear and you have to wear clean underwear but what's it happened it's faded if 
you get in an accident. Your mom always told you wear good underwear so that the, the EMTs don't see nasty underwear. Anyway, this is getting a little long, but, but anyway, I'm going to see if I can get him to put on some of my makeup and do some juggling maybe later today if it's nice or the next kind of nice day. I think we're getting some hurricane her mean wind today, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but it still might be kind of nasty. I'm probably going to make soup or something. Butternut, butternut squash soup, which I love once in a while. So... Because it's getting that time of year. I'm going to make an apple tart um, from a Jack Pan recipe because I love Jack Pan. He's my favorite. He's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite chefs. And Robert buys me his books for, for presents and stuff. So I've got Technique. I've got the one he just had, Heart and Soul. And I've got a couple others. And, and I read his, his autobiography. And I watch him on YouTube and KQED. And, and so... I make his uh, mama's uh, French apple tart a lot in the winter because it's good. <laughs> and since I'm a writer and I'm not on stage and I was, you know, I was a backstage person to begin with, I don't give a crap what I eat. I mean, I do, but I'm not like on a diet all the time. So <laughs> I'm never going to be an actress because <laughs> I can, I like to eat, you know, anyway, um, that's about Robert. Maybe we'll get him to juggle for us later this week. Take care.